Hello, surprise! I decided to pop on here and share some information about gardening with you all. Um, because it's a hot topic right now. It's hot, so we're gardening, right? Um, we have lots going in our garden, and we're more focused on perennials this year. We've got a lot of flowers going, um, but in years past, we have used oils sort of as an intrinsic part of our gardening process. Um, it becomes a massive tool for everything from repelling pests to help balancing out the soil, and I'm gonna talk about that a little bit. When I first started with oils, I was looking for solutions for healthcare, um, but one of the things that appealed to me the most was actually we were keeping bees, um, and bees um, are kind of fragile. I don't know if you heard about it, but bees are kind of in, in, a, in a tight spot right now. So um, we were trying to think of ways that we could keep bees that did less harm to the bees. It was less of a kind of intrusive way of dealing with the, the bees. Hi, Heather. Welcome. Um, and one of the things that I found was that essential oils were kind of a key element to keeping bees. There's lots of things that you can do with the oils to help improve the health of the hive safely and naturally. The reason I love that the most um, is that the bees are crucial to our, our garden. You know, if we don't have bees and they're not pollinating, um, then we're not going to, you know, long term have good produce, right? So um, we really feel like using the oils in our garden is a way to make sure that we're protecting the things that are a part of the ecosystem and that are a part of our natural surroundings in a powerful way, but also to reap the bene benefits of having plants in our garden that we maybe aren't growing. So I think that's really cool. When you think about it, you know, it sounds like, oh, we're spraying our garden with something. We're spraying our gardens with plants. So a lot of these things, not only can you use as the essential oil, but you could just plant them in your garden and use them that way. Um, one really good example of that is basil. So basil essential oil is nothing more than basil, the scent and the, and the power that basil has to repel insects and bugs specifically that maybe harm tomatoes. I'm letting you smell it, guys. Smell it. Can you smell? Woo! <laughs> Sorry. No, no smell of vision yet. Um, if you have basil, pull it out and smell it with me. But basil is a powerful um, repellent for, for specific bugs. And I'm, I'm going to look at my cheat sheet. Um, it will repel things like flies don't like basil and some other things that tend to attack um, tomatoes. So like hornworms, um, aphids, they don't like basil. So you can make a simple spray and I'll show you that and what that looks like in just a minute. When we talk about gardening, it's really important that we focus, just like when we're talking about human bodies, that we focus on the health of the individual. Um, so a lot of times we'll look at something on the surface um, in a garden that would be the produce or the leaves or whatever is on the surface, right? And we're like, oh, something's not right. Well, on a human, it's on the skin, right? We'll, we'll a lot of times see a symptom, maybe a rash, or even if it's a cough, something that's at the top, something that's bubbling up and that's out and we can see it. When real issues, are, the main, most of our issues, our diseases are caused by something internal, something in the gut. Um, and so there's this perfect balance of actually fungus and bacteria inside us, just like for the plant that resides in the soil. So we really want to make sure that their soils are very well balanced um, and that we're not doing anything to infringe upon that beautiful ecosystem and balance. Um, so a lot of times the products that we will use from the garden center are things that have glyphosate, um, which is an insecticide, um, and then we have fungicides. And all of these things will do too much. So it's really difficult to use those things in a way that doesn't throw off the balance. Um, it may bring immediate relief from a certain symptom, but what will come back from that is worse. Um, so you maybe will get rid of the fungus, but then you have no ants um, or you have no, um, I can't think of a good balance example in a plant right now, but what will happen is that balance is thrown off so that further down the road, the fertility of the soil is not there and your plants will not actually thrive in it. So we really are the best way to increase our harvest for, for now, for this season, and also for seasons to come, is to build up that soil and make it a beautiful, beautiful balance. Just like the same for us, the stomach. If we focus on our stomach and really think about gut balance, we're gonna see our health improve in so many different ways. Almost everything will improve, from emotional, um, anxiety, maybe depression issues, sleeping issues, hormone issues, you name it, all very much are related back to gut. So it's really important that we, we think about that with our plants too. The gut for a plant, though, is in the soil. 
Um, okay, so we really want to make maintain that balance with our with our with our plants. Um, one of the other one of the things that you can add to your soil if you're feeling like that balance is out. So maybe you have too much fungus. Maybe you're seeing a lot of um, a fungus pop up and in years like this that are really wet that's pretty common hot humid we're getting into this humid time in our area um, and we can start to see you know funguses pop up now first of all be aware that fungus can be really great for the plant especially if you're seeing it in the soil it can be a really good sign so we don't want to disrupt the soil fungus necessarily if you're starting to see fungus on your leaves um, on your tomatoes blight things like that then we are going to want to pay attention because it's too much right we need to we need to help help that plant um, and give it some more, just a boost for its immune system. So there are two oils I'm gonna recommend for that. One um, is Melaleuca tea tree, an incredible option. You could make a spray. Now you need very small amounts, um, but like I say with people using oils, less is more, but frequency is key. So we wanna use less oil. So you maybe would take a, a, this is a really small bottle actually. Generally when I'm working with my garden, I make a much bigger bottle. 16 ounces would be great. So take a 16 ounce spray bottle, you can reuse a spray bottle that you have already. You can um, clean out a spray bottle, maybe that had something not so good in it, and use that. But water, if you do 16 ounces, really four drops of essential oil would be plenty because plants just don't need that much. What, what you wanna do is you wanna do it regularly, so at least once a day. We've even done so much as adding it to our sprinkler system. There, You can get little siphons that go on your, your garden hoses and you can help that distribute every single time. But again, you're gonna wanna really um, dilute it pretty heavily for your plants. Um, some other key things to keep in mind when you're using essential oils on your plants, you don't want to do it at high noon. You don't want it to do, you don't want to do it when the sun is at the highest. You want to do it in the morning is the best time to do it when you're watering in the morning um, so that that plant can absorb a lot of that before or in the evening before it gets dark. Um, and in the evening, if you water in the evening too much, it can be uh, crucial because it can, um, cause funguses and molds to grow more um, because it's damp going into the evening and the damp kind of lingers through the night. So watering in the morning can be more effective. Um, some other options for tending to your garden. So if you're dealing with things like aphids, peppermint is incredible. Um, one of my favorite oils in the garden is patchouli. Most bugs don't love patchouli, but I love patchouli. And it's very relaxing and focusing. It can help you focus. It can help you um, just feel more grounded when you're in your garden, which is really the point. I mean, produce is great, but the point of the garden for me is to spend that time connecting with nature and the systems and the things that are going on out there so that I can feel more in tune with, with creation in general. And so bringing patchouli into that system is fun for me. Although I didn't always love patchouli, so if it's not your, if it's not your thing, then don't worry about it. If you don't love patchouli, an oil that's similar, that has some really great properties, and it actually has very effectively repelled slugs for us, is cedarwood. So I love to have a spray of cedarwood on hand because slugs can be a major frustration. Um, if you start seedlings or um, what else do they go after? They just go after everything, those stinking slugs. Also, ducks are great for slugs, so if you have ducks, throw those on the garden. But um, cedarwood is a really great tool for dealing with slugs and snails. Um, Arborvitae is another great option and something that you could add to your mix. Um, and then eucalyptus is incredible. So we use the oils in the garden. We also use the oils on our homestead in general. We have um, sheep and ducks and everything. We um, have had a sheep that, ha our, one, one of our sheep has a wound on its head and the flies were bothering him. And so we use eucalyptus and it repelled the flies instantaneously. They hate eucalyptus. So it's a really great option. Um, and then lastly, I wanted to give you a few ideas of how to use the oils in your garden specifically. Um, before I do that, putting peppermint on your list is such an easy thing. It's such an, a, you know, once again, it's in our top 10 oils for a reason. Um, it can be used for so many different things. It does repel bugs, a lot of bugs and other pests like moles and voles and um, mice, things like that. Um, so you can spray it throughout your garden like in that spray I was telling you about. Um, when you go out in the garden, it's cooling right? So maybe you're hot. Like I'm really hot right now. The air conditioning just got turned on. So it's just cooling off. So I'm going to take peppermint You see it put a little bit in my hand. Um, and I'm going to put it on the back of my neck. And because I'm hot, my pores are really open and it's going to be very cooling. The sensation is going to be pretty intense and it smells incredible. Um, I'm in, a, in an old camper right now teaching this lovely class, right? Do what you can with what you've got. Um, but 
immediately I feel better about my environment. It smells amazing. I'm invigorated and it's cooling. So it's cooling me and repelling bugs all at the same time. So I love peppermint in the garden. It's one of my go-tos. Um, and then Terra Shield is the second option. If you're looking for a bug repellent for your own body, when you're outside working in your garden or doing whatever you want to do, Terra Shield is incredible. And it comes in this spray bottle. And I specifically wanted to show you this because these spray bottles are so, they're, they're perfect, especially for the garden. It's a little small, but it is plastic and it's food grade. So you don't have to worry about it deteriorating with the essential oils. Um, but it's small and it's plastic. You can keep it in your pocket when you're out walking around your garden. Um, and you can get these from doTERRA with your orders. So I love having several of these on hand so I can make blends and just have them with me and sprays with me and, and they're safe to use and I don't have to worry about kids breaking them or anything like that. Um, and if I lose this amount, I'm not gonna be very sad about it, right? Or give it to somebody, I often do that. Um, so I love those spray bottles. We have larger ones too. Um, I forget what size, they might be 16 ounce. I think they might be eight ounce. Sorry, either way, those are great too. They're a little larger. They're continuous mist. Those would be amazing in the garden too. They're amazing for Terra Shield too. In fact, we've taken whole bottles of Terra Shield like this and put them in a bottle like that um, to have handy whenever we're doing outside stuff. So in this little bottle, it's very convenient and easy to use. I would just add a couple of drops of cedar wood, whatever oils you want. And you don't have to really worry about um, Mixing the wrong things with the oils, nothing's gonna blow up. Um, the worst case scenario is you don't like the smell, but since we're making this to a, um, get pests out of our garden, we don't need to worry about that. We don't want them to like the smell either. So a couple of drops of cedar wood, a couple of drops of basil, and a couple of drops of eucalyptus. So you may have heard before that growing tomatoes um, with basil is increases the, it improves the flavor of the tomatoes um, and helps repel bugs and things. They're really great companion plants. You can ha really have the same effect with the basil essential oil, um, adding it to your, um, to your tomato plants. Um, so I've done cedar wood, I've done basil, and I'm going to add eucalyptus. Maybe I already did, but okay. So just two drops of each in here. And really you could have just done one. You really don't need very many. And then I'm just going to top this off with water and that's it. Um, sometimes I will add some liquid Castile soap or some liquid on guard concentrate because a lot of aphids and other bugs do not like the, 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 um, I don't know what technically it is, the, the soapiness. So it's a really simple way to repel bugs. So right now we're dealing with Japanese beetles. I don't know about you, but I made this blend specifically to try on our Japanese beetles. Um, they can be one of the worst pests. They come in from nowhere. They're totally not native. They're totally like taking over everything. Um, so I'm going to need a giant bottle of that for our grapes and for our blackberries, um, and for our apple trees. Um, and I'm hoping that that will really make them not want to be on those plants. Um, keeping in mind though, that there is a balance. So I don't have to worry about every single bug. You don't need to either. Every single bug isn't a bad thing. Sometimes bugs come and they may even be bad bugs, but they're a part of the ecosystem. And if we let them stay, the, the good bugs will come and take care of them. And that balance will be there because then those good bugs will be like, I need to stick around here and kind of build a home here um, because there's food here for me. And so letting that balance come back into uh, kind of a regular rhythm is gonna really improve your overall quality um, on your property. Now, I know a lot of times people are like, oh, the mosquitoes, the mosquitoes. Mosquitoes are generally high in areas um, like neighborhoods where some people get sprays. So I know it can be impossible. You're like, I, well, I can't go outside, so I need to get sprayed too. Well, this is just kind of perpetuating the issue. And I understand it's really hard to be the first one to cut it off, right? Um, but what will happen is if a whole neighbor, you know, like seven of the, the eight people in the neighborhood get sprayed, then all those mosquitoes are going to come to one place, right? They're all going to flee that area and come over here. Um, so what, what the key element would be, would be to work as a neighborhood, to increase bat houses, to try to build um, maybe little bird houses for um, indigo buntings, purple martins, I mean. Um, and there are lots of ways to increase the good guys coming in so that the bad guys are not so such a such a on the on the unbalanced end okay so i hope that makes some sense to you <laughs> i'm talking a little gibberish right um okay so i've made this one of the simplest things you can do we get these stickers 
from doTERRA as well. So I'm not going to make any kind of special label. I'm just going to put a sticker from what I from the oils I put on here. So I put cedarwood and basil. Uh, make sure I have these stickers. Yep, basil. So this sheet is 50 cents. When you order from doTERRA, it's totally worth having. I have like 60 of them because I'll run out of the lavenders or whatever. Lavender is also a great bug repellent. I posted a link too where you can get this this free e-sheet or this free um, printable sheet. That is a really helpful tool. I'll show you it in just a second. So basil, cedarwood, and eucalyptus is what I put in this guy. And I can't spell very well, so e e e e. There it is. So my, I'm all labeled. Not fancy, but effective, right? We know what's in here. Um, I will definitely tell you that I've learned the hard way that it's important to label everything. Um, but this sheet is a really handy printout. We've gathered um, materials and information from a lot of different places. There's several different um, recommendations in terms of recipes for your garden, um, an insect repellent for plants, general plant protection, a mildew and fungus spray, um, and then we have a list of the oils for specific pests. So you name it. You've got chiggers, okay, fleas, okay, gnats, mosquitoes, plant lice, and snails, ticks, caterpillars, cutworms, mice, moths, slugs, spiders, weevils, aphids. It just goes on and on. So you have a lot of resource on this one little list. I love having this handy. And then some other ways to, to uh, improve your garden atmosphere and the balance in there. So that's for free. Just go ahead and um, click on the link in the title of this video. Um, and then that's it. Is that all I was going to say? I feel like there was one more thing I was going to add, but that's really it. Oh, some other suggestions that are on this sheet for using the oils in your garden, cloth strips. Um, you can just take some rags, kind of tie them around your garden and put the oils on those things. And that will repel, repel the the bugs and the moles and the voles, um, cotton balls with oils on them. And let's see, string, you could lace string around your garden. There's lots of simple ways that you can add the oils to your, to your garden in a powerful way. And um, so I just encourage you to explore and to play um, and get your hands on these oils. If you don't have them already, um, get them. They're powerful, they work. I, and I am here to tell you, we haven't had to have sprays on our gardens. Of course, we'll have a little bit of bug activity, um, but what we'll find is those bugs will come, we'll use a spray to repel them a little bit, and then the, um, the, the good bugs will come in and take care of what, what we can't handle ourselves. The only thing, I'm gonna give one disclaimer, the only thing I haven't found a solution for, total solution for is um, the Japanese beetle. So if you know one, tell me. But what, we'll, what we can promise though, is that if you improve the quality of your plants growing, then it will be able to fend off these bugs sort of at the get-go. So the stronger your plant is, the less these bad guys will come in and have power, um, which is true of us too. The stronger our immunity, the, the better off we will be to fend off bugs and to keep a balance. And so that's something to keep in mind too. And On Guard is a really powerful tool to use in your garden too. So keeping in mind On Guard is for the immune system. It would work um, to help strengthen the immune system of plants as well. So that's it. That's all I'm gonna share with you for today. If you didn't know about these great tools as, um, as a means of keeping your garden safe and secure, now you know. Uh, if you need anything, post a comment. We'd love to answer your questions. And yeah, get out there, garden, get your fingernails dirty. All right, we'll talk to you later.